you'll often see numbers with Sweden, you know, that purport, you know, they did worse than the neighboring countries, you know, it, it's strange though, because you see on the, uh, when it's convenient, Sweden is used in, as an example, no, well, they actually did do s- strong measures. And then at the other hand, they're still sometimes occasionally treated as like a warning story. Um, and that there's this idea basically that if you, um, unleashed herd immunity on the United States, that you are condemning millions to die. I mean, that's really the stakes that the discussion is held at um, here. And so we, we I, I just am curious too, if you can speak to what in Sweden, in terms of the, the clinical impact of COVID-19, what, what it looked like, uh, what some of the predictions were, some of the realities, things of that nature. But especially, you know, you, I know that you can divide the number of cases. Of, how does Sweden calculate its cases? I think that's the place to start. Sweden calculates its cases so that anybody who dies who have a COVID-19 diagnosis will often be calculated as a COVID-19 death, even though the true cause of death was something else. They did a study in one of the provinces of Sweden where they found that, well, half the people died in the hospitals, and that's usually because of COVID-19. But those who died uh, at home with the COVID-19 diagnosis, only 15% of those actually truly died of COVID-19. And most of them died of something else where COVID-19 was either contributing or not uh, uh, part of it at all. Uh, So obviously uh, some of those that are counted as COVID deaths was due to something else or would have happened no matter what. Uh, But I think that's also true in other countries like England, for example. Uh, And different countries were counted a little bit differently, uh, but uh, that's nothing we can really do much about, I think. Uh, if we look at Sweden, Sweden has higher mortality than some countries and lower than others. Uh, it's about the same as the United States now. I think it's maybe 10% more than the United States. But it also varies very much by parts of the country. So Stockholm has a much higher mortality than the rest of Sweden. Um, and uh, even though the strategy was the same. Now, you mentioned 10% more mortality. Just I, I hate that I have to say this, but when we have done polling on, on people's perspective on, you're not talking about 10% of the population. You're talking about within age groups, right? I'm talking about that the mortality rate uh, was just yeah, sort of 10% higher. The, the mortality per, per, per million was 10% higher in Sweden than in the U.S., but that's also changing because in Sweden it's still going down. It's pretty much at zero now, while the U.S. has the higher rate right now. So eventually, the U.S. is going to pass Sweden on this metric. So, so the curve basically looks as though you have the initial spike, and now Sweden is looking like, in terms of containment and mitigation, very similar or better than a lot of European countries. Uh, Sweden is down to uh, very few cases per day, uh, so it's almost zero. Uh, some other European countries are as well. So we'll see how the different countries do during the during the fall. Do you do you think that in these countries where there's very low cases, that there's still community uh, mild and asymptomatic spread happening at low levels? Uh, I think that's true in all countries, uh, and as soon as countries who were locked down and who didn't have many cases, as soon as they open up, there are going to be more cases. In Sweden, we don't know because uh, Sweden may or may not have reached herd immunity. So if they have, there will be no more more bump or no more spike. But uh, as Sweden opens up more, there could be another bump uh, during the fall. We don't know that. Interesting. Um... One thing that you said before was uh, the millions of deaths with the herd immunity in the United States. And I've, I've seen, uh, I've heard people make those predictions. And I think they are 
irresponsible because how many deaths we get depends on the strategy. Uh, if we reach herd immunity through a general lockdown where the, both the old and the young are getting sick, then yes, we can have many, many deaths. Uh, mortality will be very high by the end of this pandemic. On the other hand, if we do an age-targeted approach where the older do not get sick very much, but the youngers do, then we're going to have very few deaths. So the amount of death that we're going to have by the end of the pandemic depends on whether we do a general uh, strategy that does not depend on age versus if we do an age-targeted uh, uh, strategy.